is a video about the n prune channels function in Homer 2. Uh, right now, I got the Homer 2 uh, homepage. We'll call it the the GUI homepage set, uh, pulled up. What you see on the right here is a motor montage. It's the left and right hemisphere. We're looking at two channels right here. You see one wavelength, one wavelength, and we happen to be 760. I can tell there. If I want to look at 850, I can change that. Uh, since we're looking at the prune channels function in particular. Uh, we're going to go to Tools, Process Stream GUI, and we're actually going to pull it up. So I find in prune channels right there, and you'll see a description down below. Uh, it can be very handy in, in some of these functions. Other ones are a little bit less so. Um, you'll see the input values, what they mean, and everything like that. So I'm going to click Add, and, and then I'll click Save. When I click Save, it's going to ask, do I want to save it to the current stream, the current processing stream, or do I want to make a new file out of it? I'm going to save it to the current one so I don't have to worry about it. And now I can actually click options here. And you'll see we have n prune channels as my pipeline. There are four input variables. If you hover your mouse over them, it gives you a little description. One is D-range. So it's basically where you expect the range of your data to lie, uh, keeping in mind that we're looking at raw data at the moment. Uh, signal to noise uh, ratio threshold. Uh, it's calculated by the mean divided by the standard deviation. And if it falls below the threshold, uh, then uh, you'll be uh, excluded. So basically you're saying, I want the signal itself to be so much greater than or some multiple of uh, the, the noise or the standard deviation. Next is the SD range, saying that I'm only going to consider channels that fall within some set distance of each other. If they're too short, I'm going to exclude them. If they're too long, I'm going to exclude them. And then reset, I still haven't actually figured out what it does. It says uh, uh, reset previously pruned channels from automatic and manual. I've actually gone from uh, zero and one uh, as the as the values, and I haven't seemed to to have seen a difference. They both seem to reset, so we'll kind of ignore that for today. Uh, we'll cover these first three. So I'm going to run it uh, as with the default values and see what happens. So I'll go ahead and click run, and you'll notice, ooh, all of my channels turn pink. Uh, pink means that, especially the solid pink, means that they uh, are removed from my analysis. So I'm not doing any analysis. I can still view them but I'm not going to find any output. So there's a problem. So the first problem, well, our values are that the range of data we're looking for is uh, 1 times 10 to the 4th, which is 10,000, and 1 times 10 to the 7th, which is 10 million. So let's look at our actual data. I have it pulled up right here. Uh, D happens to be the data. So this is the nearest file that was actually loaded in Homer 2, and this is the D variable within that. You notice they're all fractions. So nowhere in here am I seeing anything even close to 10,000, which was the minimum we chose. So basically what happened was it said, I don't care about anything less than 10,000. Well, it happens that all of my data is less than 10,000. And if you're curious as to what your minimum value, what your maximum value is, you can actually do uh, min min, which is Min, one min takes the minimum of each column. The second min takes the minimum of those minimums of each column. Uh, you can look it up. And the, for this data set, it's 0 0.0433. And for the maximum, you do the same, but with max. And you get 1.0239. So that's our ranges here. Well, great. But we were way off. So let's go back here, back to Homer 2. And let's change that. So let's change this. It was 0.04. Well, let's change it to 0.03, uh, or excuse me, point negative 0.03. Um, and then the top one was pretty much just 1. So let's just change it to 1. So that's going to find uh, the, the ranges here. And you can see here, if I hover it over, if the mean is greater than or less than uh, those values, then it will be excluded. So if one value goes above, then it's no problem. But if uh, the mean of it is above, it's going to be a problem. So let's go ahead and rerun it after that change. And again, it should reset everything. There you go. They're all included. Wonderful. But let's let's get a bit more into it. So signal to noise ratio. Uh, we actually want this to be impactful. So right now it's set to two. You're saying that the mean is two times the standard deviation. Well, that's great, uh, but it's actually fairly conservative. Um, actually, very conservative, I think. Um, or maybe I'll say aggress uh, not aggressive. Um, if you're used to near slab, uh, in particular, near slab does a similar calculation uh, for coefficient of variance. And coefficient of variance is actually the same formula flipped. So instead of saying, uh, in this case, it's mean divided by standard deviation, standard deviation divided by mean. And 
what's great about that is it has a default value of 7.5, which is somewhat reasonable. That's actually a very aggressive value though. But let's say it's somewhat reasonable. And then um, 15, a CV value of 15 is a little bit more conservative, but still reasonable. So since they're inverted formulas, you can actually invert the math. Uh, so instead of taking the, uh, so you take the 15 or 0.15 in this case. So let's actually do the math here. I have a calculator on my screen. So you do one divided by 0.15 and you get 6.6. .6. So if I consider my coefficient of variance, I want it to be somewhere around 15. Well, it's again, 15%. And we'll do 6.5 or 6.6. .6. If I want it to be around uh, 7.5, you would do that and you would get 13. So somewhere between six and 14 is, is kind of a, a reasonable uh, go on this. And so let's actually start, let's, let's put that somewhere around six. Six is good, let's leave it there. And then finally is SD range. Well, we have it from zero to 45 and anyone would assume that if it's 45, that must be millimeters. Again, it's distance from source and detector. Uh, well, let's make sure of that. So uh, if I go to my MATLAB here, oh, uh, not Homer two, I want, my MATLAB home screen. Well, you go to the SD variable, it stands for source detector uh, struct, right? You open it up and you see spatial unit is set to centimeter. So considering it's actually set to centimeter, we go back in here, go to options. This is saying zero to 45 centimeters, which is pretty much your whole head. So let's change that. Um, and just to verify, if uh, if you don't believe that it's centimeters, you want it, you're saying that it must be millimeters. Well, if we set it to 10, uh, 10 being the kind of the cutoff for any short channels, we can run it and nothing changes. But if we set it to one, which if it were centimeters, this would be the cutoff for short channels. We can now run it again and we lose everything. So just for a little bit more confidence that it in fact is um, uh, centimeters and not millimeters, we would set it to that. And here I set it to 4.5 again, which would be uh, 4.5 centimeters and all the channels are there. But you have the freedom on how to operate these. It's first and foremost, look at your data, see what the range is. Uh, in our case, it's all decimals. So we want it to be much lower values than the default. Uh, 10,000 to 10 million will completely get rid of all your channels and that's that's pointless. Um, the signals noise threshold, threshold uh, you're gonna wanna play with that. If you're having someone sit still, uh, paying attention to something, you can be very aggressive. The data quality should be very good. No movement artifacts, all that. If you have somebody moving quite a bit, obviously your signal to noise won't be quite as good. Uh, so you may increase it based on your experiment, but of course don't, be reasonable with it. Um, and then you have the SD range, which is uh, zero to whatever in centimeters. So make sure that that is in centimeters. Uh, and if it, and also make sure in your data, you can look at the SD variable, open it up and look at spatial unit. There's a chance that maybe your conversion script or whatever you use did convert to millimeters. And if that's the case, make sure then it would be millimeters. Um, so do a little bit of background work before you, you just, go with the default values. Anyway, that's this um, pretty straightforward function. You can usually throw it in there kind of as a something of a filter of a motion artifact correction of, of sources, you know, a spatial filter on top of a um, uh, uh, noise filter on top of a, a few other types. So it's a pretty useful function, uh, but if you use it, just be careful. And I hope I hope that was useful. Thank you.